that guy, Don Jolly, the thing that bothers him about Rick and Morty is not so much the humor and the fucking Neil deGrasse Tyson tier, uh, put some science on it, we'll solve it with science. I haven't watched the show, but I know what Don's beef with it is, and it's that the ultimate message is, uh, uh no, hey, Morty, nothing matters, don't, uh, you see, you, you reproduce, you live and you die, nothing matters, Morty. Like, it's a very nihilistic show, I guess. I haven't watched it, but that seems to fall in line with um, the, the trend as far as uh, humor goes. Humor and, and all, everyth everything that you read in uh, New York Times or The New Yorker or whatever, it's, it's ultimately got this, this message that nothing matters, and I think, I feel like, uh, it couldn't, couldn't be further from the truth, um, but anyway, so, what I want to talk about, now that I got my 20 minute introduction out of the way, uh, so this is, um, this is one of the very, the very, this might be the most important broad topic that I have to share to share with you, broad as opposed to pointed and practical. I think the most pointed and practical advice that I can give is don't be an artist or a musician or a writer and uh, don't go to college without making damn sure that you're one of the people, one of the few people that needs to go to college. That's the most important practical pointed advice that I have to give. Most important broad advice that I have to give is wash your neck brace. When you get a neck brace, you have to wash it. Otherwise, it's gonna itch and you're gonna get diaper rash on your neck. Most important broad advice that I have to give is also potentially the most woo-woo and might alienate some people I never, I never know how to use that word properly. Am I alienating myself or would I be alienating you? I don't know, okay? Um, I'll have to look that up on the old dictionary there when I get, when I remember, which I won't do. <coughs> but this is very yoga. This is very the alchemist. This is very the, the secret. The book, The Secret. Mental projection. You imagine it and it becomes real if you wish for it. You'll get it. This is the most new agey advice that I have to offer. And it's this. Uh, fucking negativity. And now I'm not talking about humor. I'm not talking about making jokes that make fun of Heather Heyer. Okay? I'm not talking about all that stuff. I'm talking about actual negativity um, which might be more like being blackpilled but even blackpilled people care about what's going on and they're paying attention to what's going on what I'm talking about is like a primal unthinking base level negativity Watching cartoons, eating yummy cereal, and being a petty person, wishing that bad things would happen to people in your personal life. I'm talking about real, genuine negativity as an end and not as a means. And then positivity. And this is not, everything's great. Oh my gosh, everything's great, you guys. Positivity, real positivity, which is when you are tested, when you have nothing, when you're in a fucking ditch, can you still muster the fortitude to fucking do something? Okay, I'm talking about actual positivity, not surface level positivity, which may be helpful, but it's not what I'm talking about, not related to this, okay? Um, so actual, like, elemental force of nature, negativity and positivity, 
Uh, actual yin and yang are real. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> They're fucking real. <laughs> and, um, you can use them to either ruin your life or get something done. That's the gist of it. That's basically where I'm going with this one. Negativity, positivity are real. And depending on what your mix is, okay, what your air-fuel ratio is, negativity versus positivity, you will either end up tortured by demons that you cannot see and cannot understand, or you will end up living some sort of spiritually, mentally, financially, possibly fulfilling life. And the outcomes in between the bad one and the good one are more or less uh, the more or less determined oh god by what your your personal blend of negativity slash positivity is if if what you do and this is not like it's I'm not saying it's like karma or something where the negative things are gonna be like points that add up and uh You get punished. You get punished once a week based on how many naughty points you have. But what I'm saying is, you can you can train your brain to run on battery acid very easily. You can think uh, negative things, and it's kind of like being a rageaholic. Look up what a rageaholic is if you don't know that you can actually become a rageaholic. But you can just as easily become a poisonaholic. You can wallow in <clears throat> mental poison and think the worst shit all day and hate yourself and hate the people around you and hate the people who might care about you if you weren't such a piece of shit. Um, and you can, you can make that a self-reinforcing mental loop that uh, may one day become impossible to get out of. And it's probably pretty easy for some people to do that. It's definitely the path of least resistance. Um... And it's helped along the way by self-pity, by entitlement, by thinking that the world owes you something, by thinking that you're better than other people, by um, having high expectations, and by being the type of person who has a tantrum when those expectations are not met. those are all things that will help you in your journey to hell which you can very easily reach and uh, it may take a long time before you're you're a permanent resident of hell but it'll eventually happen and when it does it'll feel like it happened in the blink of an eye and <laughs> I can't imagine what would be worse. Thinking about that time that you took getting to hell and thinking about what you could have done with it and thinking about how quickly it passed by. Ten years, wow. That was ten years ago? I'm in hell. I don't know if that's worse or if knowing that for the next 20 or 30 or 40 years your only option is enjoying hell. 
All right, so I, was, I mentioned that uh, negativity is the path of least resistance. Now, if you have a good life, which uh, I don't, I don't begrudge you that. I'm not saying I don't. I wouldn't say that rich people are. Uh, well, that's not true. There is, there is something about, there is something about never having to be in the trenches or out in the wilderness and experiencing how cold life is that will um, eventually lead to a person not being morally complete something like that you can you can tell when someone has never had to face any adversity and they're not they're usually not cool people there's some of them are cool okay But I grew up in a I grew up in a rich town, and uh, there were a lot of people <clears throat> from my high school who um, <clears throat> they had it on fucking Easy Street. Their dads had like Wall Street jobs and stuff, and after school, there's a lot of kids from my high school who ended up getting like consulting jobs and marketing marketing jobs and like just just easy they they slid into an easy nepotism slot and uh they don't look like they're doing too good um and i hope they are and some of some of them are and i'm happy to see that for sure but um it's it's tough to be a good well-rounded cool person if you have not really, um, taking some shitty, shitty knocks in your, uh, in your life. So anyway, path of least resistance. Being a hateful, um, poisonous turd is easy. All you have to do is just wake up. Okay, your body does that naturally. You put on some YouTube videos, you put on the TV, um, and you just spend the day sort of ruminating on how you have nothing and how uh, other people have it better than you and they deserve it less and you deserve the most, etc. Like it's not it's not hard to do that. <clears throat> being um, being out there with nothing, and in a lot of cases less than nothing, with debt, with problems with high body fat, with um, these these things that would, in an RPG game, would be equivalent to like a curse, okay? You're cursed right now. You've got that purple gloom over your head. Fuck! This is a curse right now, RPG curse, okay? And it's like, um, in Earthbound, when you get the mushroom on your head, and pressing right makes you go down, okay? And you don't know how the fuck to walk anymore. When you have that, the equivalent of that in real life, and you don't have a game plan, you don't have a five-year plan, you don't have any talent, you don't have any assets, you have nothing, it is very, very fucking difficult and almost insane to imagine something better or to tell people that you're gonna try to get something better. You'll sound, you will sound like a fucking insane person if you ever tell somebody that you have actual ambition when you're in this state, okay? Anyway, back to my point here. We've got visitors. Uh, <clears throat> so you have, you have nothing you probably have less than nothing. You probably have a hundred thousand in debt. That's less than nothing. That means you're below zero. You're not even a zero. You're not even an empty sun chips bag on the curb right now. You're an empty sun chips bag full of shit and hep C needles. That's what your status is in life right now, okay? You are 
In, if you're playing an RPG, you're not the main character, you're the slime, the level 2 slime that the main character kills in one hit. That's your state of being. And I'm not saying that to, to rip on you, I'm saying, hypothetically, that might be where you are. I was there, okay? That's why I'm not saying it with malice, I'm not saying it to deride you, okay? Um, and to be, to be a level 2 slime and be like, yeah, one day I'm gonna beat the boss is fucking insane. That is insane. And to tr just start working towards beating the boss as a level 2 slime is like... It's fucking difficult, man. It is so difficult. <clears throat> and when I was, um... When I was in my... my one of the toughest places which was when I was selling cars. Um, selling cars, probably had like 5,000 subscribers or something. Uh, the videos were making negative money. You know, I was put, I was selling my mom's jewelry to buy camera equipment and shit. And uh, working this job selling cars, which was uh, tough because, you know, in the winter, you don't sell cars in the winter. Nobody comes in. You go there, you go to the dealership for 12 hours. Not a single fucking person walks into the dealership. It's cold as fuck, and it was like 2000 and 2009, I think, so nobody had money. Nobody was buying cars. This was before, this was right before the cash for cars stimulus. Because nobody was buying cars, I think George, no, not George Bush, I think it was Obama made it so that any any car you brought in, even if it was totally worthless, was like, um, you automatically got like $4,000 trade-in value for that. Or something, I forgot how it worked exactly, but that was like the, the lowest point of car sales. Winter, you could go a week without seeing a single fucking customer at a big Toyota dealership. One week three people come in, none of them buy. And so what you do is you go there, and because you want to be the first salesman, you're standing outside all day, okay? You don't you don't get to stand outside all day in a Gore-Tex, in a nice, like, Swedish person snowsuit. Uh, you stand outside all day in, like, dress slacks when it's fucking freezing. And you're standing, your knees start to hurt, your feet hurt, you're wearing, like, thin leather shoes. Um... And the most protection you get is like a north, it's like a dealership fleece. You get a nice fleece, uh, <clears throat> and people come in, and they don't want to buy. They're having a bad day. It's snowy. There's just slush everywhere. Um, they track slush into the dealership, and um, you know they get they get in the car for the test drive, and they they got snow. They get snow in the car. Um, and what you do all day, instead of selling cars, is you move cars around the lot so that plow trucks can plow anytime there's snow, and you clear all the snow off the cars. You do this every day that it snows. Um, it was just, it, it wasn't that the work was so bad, it was also that I was making negative money because when you don't sell cars at a dealership it's it's all commission based but they have to like nominally pay you uh some form of minimum minimum wage so it's called the draw so they pay you like eight hundred dollars a week or something but that money has to be paid back from your commission so it's just like like you go sell a car for nothing it's just the it was just the worst and um, and it wasn't it wasn't that the job was so bad. There's there's tons of shitty jobs. That's that's really the only like shitty job that I've had. It wasn't so bad. What was really bad about it was just the the sole death of not moving myself forward. The 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 spiritual. Um, uh, cobwebs that were forming when each day I wanted to do a video thing or 
work on on building the um, the brand or whatever, and just knowing that I, I when when would I ever be able to get back to this? When would I have uh, the time or the or the money to stop selling cars for 10, 12 hours a day and um, moving 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 cars and cleaning the snow off of them because that's what the job was. So that was rough, um, and I think there was some salesman or some motivational speaker or something, and he, it wasn't like someone made some brilliant point or something, it was just that I heard the word heat, and I heard the word heat, and I thought about heat, um, and that's when I started to do this visualization thing that uh, really helped. And it was thinking about, like, closing your eyes and picturing, um, like, f you know, freezing ice crystals, picturing picturing the world in a, in a symbolic fantasy world way of what it really is, which is this frozen wasteland where everybody else is so um, caught up in trying not to freeze to death, that there's no fucking way that they could help you in any form or even acknowledge your existence. So it's just ice crystals. It's just this blue, this pale blue freezing wasteland. And imagining in your hands a tiny, um, almost imperceptibly, just barely glowing, the tiniest little ember, the tiniest ball of fire that you have to stoke, you have to protect it, and you have to somehow build it into something. Ah, oh, gosh. And that's, um, that was a very useful, that is a very useful metaphor, visual metaphor for what you really have to do to be truly positive. I'm not talking about surface level positivity because I had shitloads of that because I was a car salesman. Oh, you want to try the new, you want to try the new Toyota Yaris? Get ready for a treat. Get ready for a surprise, man. You're going to love the kick of this 1.6 liter engine true negativity. I'm not talking about making fun of the girl, the Dodge Charger heart attack girl. That's not at all the type of shit that I'm saying here. I'm talking about actual negativity. I'm talking about actually being consumed by hate and jealousy and um, taking the easy way out. Uh, there's that, and then there's the hard way, which is actually being a level two slime and building anything, becoming anything, whether it's lifting weights, learning how to weld, figuring out some small business idea that works, whatever the fuck it is that you think you can do, it's really, really tough to do that as a level two slime. And, um, Heat and momentum are the two things that you have to you have to cultivate them. Like imagine the the final scene from Fifth Element when uh, Chris Tucker does not have any fire and they find one match. They have to have the fire element. All they have is one match. Nobody breathes, and they manage to save the galaxy with the one match. That's a even if even if you're starting off as a level 10 slime or even if you're starting off as the main character in your RPG and you have a short sword and the game's easier than it is for other people that that attitude is still helpful that attitude of like obsessively obsessively protecting and being vigilant and like busting your ass to 
to build your your medium sized fire or whatever it is into something that is magnificent and fulfilling and uh, brings light and uh, goodness to yourself, to the people in your tribal circle, or to strangers online, whatever. Those are like the two options in my mind, and there's a mix, there's a gradient in between. Uh, <clears throat> and that's that. 